All right, so look, Game Freak straight up made a Pokemon out of a tumbleweed. They just slapped a face on my dude, called it a day. And the best part is, this thing is an absolute beast. Thing is super fun to use, plus it has a brand new ability in Gen 9 that of course we about to take advantage of. As always, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Less than half the people who watch the channel are subscribed, and it would mean a lot if you could. I'm on my way to 300k, and I've got some big plans coming for 2023. Anyway, looking at the matchup here, I got the team full of Outcasts, just kind of some fun stuff that I wanted to use. It is centered around the Bramblegast with a Tailwind on the Kilowattril. Uh, my opponent has a rather interesting squad over here as well. There's uh, definitely some Pokemon with potential to maybe get some shit going. Always got to appreciate the creativity. There's definitely some Mons that can catch you off guard doing things you're not expecting, but he's actually going to end up leading off with the Driftblim, and that's actually pretty nice for me. I sent out the old Zap Trace, the Kmart Zapdos, and my main goal here is to either set up a Tailwind or just go right for a nice little Volt Switch. I know he has nothing that can stop a Volt Switch. However, I'm actually thinking Bramblegast under the Tailwind looks pretty nice against this team considering my Terra type. So, my thought process is this. I'm going to go ahead and set up a Tailwind. I know I'm going to be faster no matter what. Uh, that he sends in so I get up that basically tailwind for free as now he just brings in the Papa Smurf shiny cloth Gotta be the greatest shiny in the game. I actually have not even seen one of these things yet And that's actually a good question of the day leave a comment. What is your favorite new gen 9 shiny? I feel like a lot of them suck, but some of them are kind of cool I don't know so going for the tailwind there that actually activates my ability gives me a nice little boost in electric damage here As now I go for the volt switch and that just straight up takes care of Papa Smurf not gonna lie, I wasn't really sure if that was gonna kill, but it looks like that little extra boost from the wind was able to take care of it. So Cloth being down is amazing, and now I get a free switch. And I'm thinking, is it time for the weed? It's it's time for the weed. I'm gonna send this boy out into the wind, fly this bitch like a kite, and uh, that's gonna activate my Wind Rider ability. So if you're unfamiliar, if you send this thing out with a Tailwind active, uh, you actually get a nice little attack boost. So the Wind Rider there, let's go ahead and get some wind in my sails. I'm flying around all crazy, and that is pretty damn nice. Because now I'm behind Tailwind, I'm super fast, and I got plus one attack, and this thing's attack is already super nice. Base 115 attack. This boy may look pretty friendly, but he, I assure you, will eat your children. So, listen, I go for the Terra here. Uh, I expected him to probably go into his Steel type, which is the Rev Room, and I'm thinking, perfect. I can go ahead and just light this motherfucker on fire. Now we got a, a flaming tumbleweed in the wind. Scariest sight of all time. And I'll tell you what, if you're, the, if you're the little metal engine on the other side, there's only two things you can do. You can either fuck around or you can find out. My boy is potentially going to do both. He actually ends up going for a Terra of his own, which I did not expect. And he actually lights his engine on fire. So there's just crystals flying everywhere. The battlefield is literally on fire. Um, <laughs> that is definitely interesting. Because uh, he still had the super effective hit with the poison jab. Uh, however, I go for the Terra Blast. And that thing being fire type now, it does resist that. But it still does enough. For a two-hit KO, and that you love to see it. So I pop his balloon just to rain on his parade that much more, as he actually fires off a Terror Blast <laughs> right back at me. So we had the same exact idea here. We got candles going. Um, I, I take that super nicely, which is great. I'm still able to outspeed even naturally, uh, but especially with the Tailwind up, one more Terror Blast should be able to take care of this thing. And I'll tell you what, he doesn't have much that wants to switch into this thing. This Bramble Gas is an absolute beast at this moment in time, and one more Terror Blast is going to take care of it. Something, something hilarious about seeing a, a grass type just launching fire. Uh, so down goes the Rever Room. That thing could have been a pretty big threat. And it's also really nice to uh, ensure that he kind of gets rid of his Terra. So now I don't have to have any crazy shenanigans to worry about. No more things changing types, and that's always a good feeling. So now he gets a free switch, and he decides to go into the Drift Blim. So I know that I'm actually able to outspeed. This thing is base 90, whereas Drift Blim is, I believe, base 80. But I do, I, I want to play it safe here, because I know that the Bramble Ghast actually has a pretty good matchup on a, on a couple of his things. So... Here, I'm just going to go ahead and conserve some weed, and I'm going to switch directly into my Mabastip. I know that I can take at least one attack from this thing, and being Choice Scarf, I could potentially catch him off guard, be able to outspeed, and then finish it off. So, he is going to hit me with an Air Slash on the switch in, does a whole dick load of damage, and he actually also reveals that it's actually going to be Flame Orb. So, uh, the reason why this thing is Flame Orb is it actually has the ability called Flare Boost, uh, that actually boosts your special attack when you have a burn. But... I am able to outspeed with my Choice Scarf, I go for the Lockjaw, actually he lives it with like 5 HP, and then goes for a Tailwind of his own. Luckily the Burn is going to knock this thing out at the end of the turn, or else that could have been pretty scary. That thing with a Flare Boost behind a Tailwind is a very scary ass balloon. Uh, but down that thing goes, and that's great, but this might be the, seriously the windiest battle of all time. There's been two Tailwinds already, I still got some Tailwinds in the back pocket. If you were a, fly if you were a Pokemon trainer flying a kite, this is quite literally the, the schoolyard to be in. So. Uh, he brings in the Star Raptor, and I'm thinking this thing is likely going to be like a Choice Scarf set. I'm thinking it's going to go for 
uh, Brave Bird or Close Combat here. So I'm thinking Don Fan's a pretty easy switch and I take like 30%. Goes for the Close Combat and that does a whole shit ton of damage. That does way more than I was expecting. And what that tells me is that this thing is actually holding the Choice Band item because there's no way uh, a Close Combat is going to do over half to this max HP and defense Don Fan. So... That is actually super good to know later on. Knowing that this thing is choice banned is going to be a lot easier to kind of predict and take care of. Uh, I know that I have a chance to live this next one. I stay and try to get my stealth rock up, but he actually ends up getting the critical hit with the next close combat. Uh, so it could have been just max damage that would have killed anyway, but Dom Fan going down on a switch in and then not being able to get anything off uh, is not ideal there. A stealth rock would have been super good for me. He has stuff in the back that... Uh, I would have enjoyed having some rocks up. So, knowing that this thing is not Choice Scarf, I can actually go into uh, the Killer Watchel. Even if he was Scarf, I could easily just take a close combat. But uh, my Watchel is about fast as hell, and I can go ahead and set up a Tailwind again. He does still have his Tailwind up, but I figure, fuck it, we're just going to match winds out here. And it's going to be straight up Mach 10 out here as in comes the, uh, the Lawnmower. So the Rotom Mow comes in. I get my Tailwind up, which is great. That is going to... Uh, give me my wind power on my next turn. And so Rotom Mo coming in here, the Tailwind is actually going to peter out. Uh, me being way faster anyway, I knew I was going to have the advantage on the speed tier there. Uh, but my plan is this. I basically just need to go for the Thunderbolt here with that boost in damage. Just get a nice little chunk here. I could Air Slash, uh, but it's safest for me just to Thunderbolt just to get a little bit of chip. Uh, and the reason for that is because then I can just basically send the Bramble Ghast easily out speed. And then, you know, Terror Blast Fire kills it. So... I was actually planning on dying there. He isn't able to take care of the Zap Trace, so I just get to fire off another Thunderbolt. Uh, without that wind power, it's not going to do as much, but I've got this thing down to half, and he does exactly what I need him to do, and that is kill the Kilowatt Troll. And that is because now, you know, Bramble Gas can come in, enjoy himself some nice little wind, and uh, still be faster to be able to take care of the Rotom Mo. So, Grim Shady coming in, looking as dapper as ever, ready to ride some wind and get that nice little attack boost, plus being fast as hell. This is what Pokemon has become, by the way. I am in here fighting a lawnmower with my tumbleweed that has candles on his head. I don't know. I'm able to outspeed uh, and I get the Terror Blast off, which is going to knock it out. What's funny is that Bramblegast kind of, most of the time it's bread and butter, is going for that super strong stab power whip and does like half damage to something that even resists it. Uh, but I haven't had to click that yet. With Life Orb um, and that attack boost easily, you know, everything dies and the Tailwind does go away. But it did allow me to, you know, finish off the mower. And now back comes the Star Raptor. So here's the deal. If this Star Raptor is not Jolly, I actually outspeed it by like five points. If this is an adamant choice banded Star Raptor, it straight up gets outsped by the Tumbleweed. And that is a chance that I am willing to take. It actually turns out to be adamant and the Terror Blast goes first. I'm able to take care of the Star Raptor. And that's just a one hit KO with that attack boost. And this is why you run Jolly max speed on the Bramblegast, because you're just outspeeding birds out here. <laughs> so, his final Pokemon is going to be the Jumpluff. Speaking of fast grass types, I, I have always hated Jumpluff, but today I'm thinking maybe I'll be able to take care of it. Um, it is going to be faster than the Bramblegast, of course. Actually, thinking of Pokemon that should get the Wind Rider ability, I feel like Jumpluff should. Just straight up Cotton Balls flying around, but I died to the Acrobatics, which is fine. Because uh, now this just allows me a free switch into whatever I would like. And with the Pokemon I have left, I should be able to take care of it. So I'm actually just going to end up going into the Bomb Bird. Uh, just because fucking Payload never gets to do anything. I'm thinking, hey, maybe he'll feel a little better if he gets to kill the, the Jump Bluff. So all I got to do is click Brave Bird for the win. And that was an interesting game. Bramble Ghast is super fun to use. Uh, the Tailwind shenanigans can be super hard to pull off, but... If you can make it happen, it's pretty cool. So Payload's going to finish it off with the Brave Bird for us, and that is going to be the end of the match. Thank you guys very much for watching. Listen, I do really appreciate all the support on these videos. I'm having a whole lot, lot of fun making them, and I plan on not stopping anytime soon. So leave a like on the video if you did enjoy, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.